And the first thing I want to talk about today is everyone's favorite Thanksgiving dinner topic, trans rights. Hold up. Before we continue this video, I need to let you guys know that this is a two-part series. The first part mainly explaining the terms and understanding the specifics and me trying to explain them to the fairest way I can possi I possibly can. Oh god. Also, my apologies in not uploading a video for the longest time at work just decided to be like, hey, let's, let's, let's do a bunch of 80-hour shifts and sleep just no, but let's get back to that main clip. What I'm fascinated by today is a story that's popped up about trans rights in sports. And we've seen stories like this over the past few years. You have men transitioning to being women. One of the most high profile stories we saw from this was Fallon Fox, who was born a man, became a woman. She was just dominating the other women she was fighting. People were angry at first because it wasn't public information that she had transitioned, but also people angry in general saying that she had an unfair advantage. And then on the other end, you have instances of someone that was born a woman that transitioned to being a man. And we saw that in the case of a Texas wrestler who who transitioned to become a man. So you have this teenage boy, but because the rules are the way they are in that state, he wants to and is not being allowed to wrestle other boys. And so he has to compete in the women's division where he is obviously dominating. There's a whole uproar there. And now it's becoming more of an international story. And that's because of 39 year old Laurel Hubbard. Laurel is a 39 year old transgender woman. She's competing at an Australian international event over the weekend where she not only won, but set a national record. And while legal in this competition, her dominance has a lot of people crying out, is this really fair? Is this an even playing field. She was so dominant, she beat her closest rival by lifting 40 more pounds than them. And that's also because last year, the International Olympics Committee changed the rules regarding trans athletes. Under previous IOC guidelines, athletes who transitioned from male to female or vice versa were required to have reassignment surgery followed by at least two years of hormone therapy in order to be eligible to compete. Now, sex reassignment surgery is no longer required, and male to female athletes just have to show that their testosterone level doesn't go above a cutoff point. And that needs to be documented at least one year before their first competition. And while there are people that argue that that is the right cutoff point, if a person doesn't have over a certain amount of testosterone, they do not have an advantage. There's also a group of people that say, no, it's still not fair. We can talk about male-female equality in the world, that it's something that we should strive for, but we should also acknowledge that we are biologically different. There is a reason in sports that there is a separation of men and women. And Dr. Ramona Krutzik is one of the people that pointed out the potential advantages here. Body mass, shape, bone density. People saying, look at the size difference between Laurel and all her competitors. Adding that even if you take the medication to lower your bone density over time, that can take 15 years. And because those who have gone from male to female are taking estrogen, it actually helps them preserve their bone density. And so at the end of this story, I look at the whole situation and I say, I don't know what the right thing to do is. It definitely seems like there's less of an issue for female to male athletes. But when it comes to male to female athletes, how can you keep things fair? Or in the case of situations where they have to actually attack each other, whether in wrestling or MMA, how do you keep it then safe and on the same level? Now it's important to note that sport lifting and fighting are not exactly the same. For example, if you look at the fittest people on planet Earth, Matt Fazer and Tia Claritomi, I can't say her name, they happen to be at the top of the fitness game hands down. Like really, just look at their stats. Just look at their stats. They literally live for being fit. So it's safe to say that they're the archetype of both male and female fitness and strength. Not the strongest, but definitely the fittest. And that's important when it comes to fighting. However, it is also important to note that there is a gap between the weight, it's about 30 to 40 pounds, and that can play dramatically different in their performance uh, when it comes well, to well, I'm lifting stuff and running far, you know what I mean. Now it's important to note that, this, that strength has not been as needed for females in the human race, historically among working civilizations. And that's nearly all accredited to the roles that we have when it comes to the continuation of our own race. Women have the ability to give birth and men, well, don't. Because of that birthing process, there, there is a huge power gap between the two sexes. I mean, effectively you have one working out for, I don't know, their entire life and then you have another one that's oh, nine months out. It's kind of a yin-yang thing. In our past, we would have children not just for the betterment of our future, but we would also have children because it was a means of self-protection. I mean, uh, our strength was in our numbers, so the more of you that there were, the higher the chances that you would have in order to prolong your living or live longer or whatever you want to say. And women historically, and even today, surprisingly, 
uh, have always been the bearers of life. And if we're in it to have as many kids as we as possible, then that literally means that the female sex will be out of out of the ability to increase their strength in any effective way for one for one year times however many kids that they have. They won't have a whole lot of wiggle room to in order to become a lot stronger. But there is more than just the simple reason as to why the genetics is so different. But then again, let's also look at our close relatives, the gorilla. Female gorillas are typically about five feet tall and they weigh about 215 pounds. And on average, gorillas are about four to five times stronger than the human being. And male gorillas are typically two times stronger than the female gorillas. And that's insane why that is i'm pretty sure it has a lot to do with the whole birthing thing but you know it's a, it's a, it's a weird yin yang thing i don't know so when it comes to things like sports that involve direct measurement like speed agility and power and and, and strength and all of these things there's a very clear and very obvious uh, power gap between the two Fighting is different. In fighting, strength isn't the only thing that matters. It's a very powerful tool for the victor, but it's not the only defining factor. I mean, just look at Francis Ngannou, for example. Both guys landed big shots. It was actually Stipe landing a lot of nice right hands in that first round. We saw the chin of Francis Ngannou in full effect. It was Stipe landing shots from the outside, level changing, putting Francis Ngannou on his back and just getting him to waste a lot of energy. At one point, Stipe wasn't even hitting him. He was just resting on the back of Francis Ngannou saying, I'm gonna let you carry my weight. I'm gonna let you work a lot harder. Um, and, and I think that really was the strategy that truly paid off. Very powerful and very fast. In fact, most of his wins have been one hit knockouts, but here he was outskilled. I mean, even take the formidable Ronda Rousey who was undefeated, no one could touch her until Holly Holm figured out what was wrong with her striking game and exploited that. And then she was outskilled. So power has a huge advantage when it comes to fighting, but it's not the only thing that matters because if it was, then someone would have already knocked out Floyd Mayweather. Fighting as a whole is more along the lines of the Chinese game at Go. But with a heavier consequence, a failure. Skill and IQ can be power, but to have it the opposite way is literally just a fighter's chance. But what is a transgender and how does it affect a fighter? Transgender is someone who experiences gender dysphoria. And gender dysphoria, off of a quick Google search, the distress a person experiences as a result of the sex and gender they were assigned at birth. Now, what is assigned at birth? Sex assignment, again, a simple Google search, sometimes known as gender assignment, is the determination of an infant's sex at birth. In majority of births, a relative, a midwife, a nurse, or physician inspects the genitalia when the baby is delivered. And sex and gender are assigned without expectations of ambiguity because, I mean, how hard is it to tell if one is one and the other is two? I mean, pretty simple. And assignment may also be done prior to birth with an ultrasound. I mean, you can literally just look at it and be like, oh, that's a boy. <laughs> that's, that's, yep. Dude. So going back to gender dysphoria, gender dysphoria is essentially uncomfort with one's self, which unfortunately has to be categorized as mental illness. Now, gender dysphoria is the distress that one feels due to the assignment of their gender. Now, if you look at the definition of mental illness, even according to the American Psychiatric, mental illness is as follows. What is mental illness? Mental illness is nothing to be ashamed of. It is a medical medical problem, just like heart disease or diabetes, which are fatal, by the way. Mental illnesses are health conditions involving changes in, in thinking, emotion, or behavior, or a combination of these. Mental illnesses are, so, are associated with distress and or problems functioning in social work or family activities. Mental illness is common. You're gonna have to play some word word keychain here because distress is the same word that is being used when you classify gender dysphoria. And if we look back at it, gender dysphoria is the distress a person experiences. But how does this affect the physical attributes and compatibilities of a fighter? Well, other than the differences that were already mentioned in the beginning of this video, that men and women have had a vastly different role in the progression of the human race, which has therefore changed their physical ability to grow in strength. Aside from these differences, what other differences are there? Well, Philip DeFranco mentioned a, a bit of information that it could take up to 15 years before we even start seeing changes. So essentially within those 15 years, there's no real change. Well, what does the former UFC champion Ronda Rousey have to say about Fallon Fox in this in this specific case? The, as far as noted, only transgender fighter out there who's very high profile.
What is your take on, on Fallon Fox? I mean, there's so, she's so much in the news lately. What is your take on her? Um, my take that, um, you know, if, if you're a man who identifies as a woman or a woman identifies as a man, that's something that you can't control. It's not your choice. It's just the way that you are. But um, with being transgender, that does require a choice. And I think it needs to be case by case basis. On the, on the Fallon Fox's case, she went through puberty entirely as a man. And um, though I do believe that, you know, her identity definitely is that of a woman. I mean, just at this point in her life, it's just not scientifically possible to make her body exactly equal to that of a woman. If it was in another case, someone who was identified much earlier and went, underwent hormone suppression and then later when they were old enough to make the decision underwent the surgery, uh, I think that that would be much more understandable. But I think uh, transgender fighters should be taken by case by case basis. And if you already developed through puberty as a man, I don't think you should be able to compete as a woman. But I mean, I, I really try not to give my opinion on this subject until I really extensively researched it. And, um, you know, it's just the bone density and uh, bone structure that you have uh, after you've gone through puberty as a man. It's just, it, it's an advantage over a woman, you know? And it's something like MMA, you know, if someone, he kicks you and if you check a kick, the difference between if the person that threw the kick or the person checking the kick hurt, gets hurt, it, I mean, it has to do a lot with the bone density and it's just an advantage. So um, that's just my opinion. Um, and if, I, I, and I've known of other people before that um, wanted to, to compete in sports, but also believe that um, they are identified as a woman. And then they waited until after their career to undergo the surgery because it's just, the science hasn't caught up yet. You can't do a complete transformation yet after, um, after you've already gone through puberty. Bone density? What's the difference between the bone density? Well, it just so happened that the United States government did a small research on 82 twins involving this some, somewhat controlled test. The test involved a dual energy x-ray absorptometry, absorb DAXA scan. <laughs> Bone mass density versus bone mass density at the third lumbar vertebrae, femoral neck, the forearm, were compared between 82 opposite sex pairs aged 18 to 80. Bone mass constant content was significantly higher in males at all three sites, 26 to 45.5 percent more. But does that affect the fighter? Now it's important to note that twins are probably going to be the best form of being able to compare the two differences between the two sexes. I mean, think about it. If you take me in comparison to some random person on the street and chances are I'm going to be a lot bigger than her. Um, chances are that. Uh, but then that has to do with genetics and the best way to be able to compare the two is, well, with twins. And that weight difference is also something to take into consideration because if you have that massive weight difference, like I'm 300 pounds, and if you take me versus some chick who's 116 pounds, chances are her strikes are just simply not going to hurt. If, if you do take someone who is a higher weight class or a lower weight class and they meet the, meet the person either going up or down, the person with less change is obviously going to be the person that has the higher chance of winning because their body is under less stress because that is where they're more comfortable at. I mean, it's probably why Ronda Rousey never really fought Chris Cyborg, but that's a side side note. Now, what does Joe Rogan have to say about it? He's a pretty big commentator on the martial art, and I'm sure he's done something about it. Oh, look, he has. There was a, uh, a pretty famous case of uh, a guy who had been a guy for 30 years, became a woman for two years, you know, or, you know, went transgender, whatever you want to call it, and started fighting MMA and wasn't telling these women that she used to be a man for 30 fucking years. And I was like, well, that's crazy. Like, if you tell people and they still want to fight, that's fine. I think you should be able to do whatever you want to do, just like I think you should be able to ride a bull. I, you know, I support your right to ride a bull. You want to ride a bull? I'm not telling you you shouldn't do it. Because I don't, I, who the fuck am I to tell you they shouldn't jump out of buildings and, uh, and skydive? Or uh, jump out of planes, rather. Or uh, jump off cliffs with one of those wingsuits like my friend Andy does. You, you, should, you should be able to do whatever you want to do, as long as you're informed. But this idea that it's not something that you need to tell the other person about because now you're a woman. I say that's bullshit. You're biologically a man. You were born a man. You have an XY chromosome. You have all sorts of mechanical advantages. You have a different bone structure. It's not the fucking same. And if these people want to continue this crazy narrative that once you decide that you identify with being a woman, you should be able to compete as a woman, it's fucking crazy. I mean, I'm sure you saw what happened with that kid in high school. There oh, was a yeah. kid in high school. Yeah, she she wanted to be a boy, 
And so they started giving her testosterone treatments, but she still has to compete as a girl in wrestling while she's transitioning to being a boy. So they're giving her these testosterone treatments, and she's just mauling these girls. Yeah, yeah. It's just not fair. So transgender fighters fighting the opposite sex is really...